Tuolumne Poetry Festival. From where comes this Tuolumne River with its rainbows of rippling cobble and swirling river prints? To this jagged, zigzag ascent along sharp-edged rocks, reminding my feet that they've climbed here before leading me to a lodge door of pine poles and fitted stone, one shaped like outspread wings with a shadow piercing its center, all fitting together with such preciseness, a rock wall fashioned from heat and pressure, veins within them silenced by the crystallization of minerals still echoing when struck. To what? To this gentian stalk with its spearheaded leaves like deer's tongues, surrounded by candle-like flower bulbs that are reaching to open, burst into light one after another, their long thirst for moisture satiated like all of us pod people, ready to bloom a new tongue in the presence of such commingling. These waves and tremors of heartstrings sending up tendrils with deep inner vines to coil around our fresh, ripe gathering. the 27th Annual Poetry Festival at Tuolumne Meadows uh, convened in the historic Parsons Lodge. And we had uh, three poets that were the leading poets there. <coughs> and two of them, one is Rosemary Tromer and the other was Forrest Gander. And they are the ones who um, conducted the workshops and that poem that Claudia just read of hers, that's from that place, from the workshop, a place like that. <clears throat> and we've been attending that for eight or ten years there. Uh, we go to Lee Vining, and that is a hamlet overlooking Mono Lake. That's what they call it, the Lakeview Lodge. And we rendezvous there with a couple other people. Uh, Vivian Olds from, comes down from Wadsworth, Nevada. And um, Deanna Beachley, she comes all the way over there from Las Vegas. Uh, also this year was one of Claudia's poetry uh, partners here in San Diego was also Donna and her partner Bill also uh, joined us there. <clears throat> so. That gives you an idea how I am starting here. Uh, the first thing I'm going to say is here, this is my painting that is in the center. And it's called One of a Kind, and it's of Pyramid Lake. I have long been an artist of Pyramid Lake, and long enough to be included here in this book of Nevada painters of the 20th century. And also one of my paintings is in this. So without going into uh, more of what my history has been there, 
I just want to introduce that uh, Pyramid Lake is known for because this is the pyramid. It's gotten that name from the American explorer J.C. Fremont who had been to Egypt and when he saw this, he was on the other side and the sun was shining on it. He named it after the, the Pyramid Cheops in Egypt. That's how it got its name. This is Anaho Island and this is the sacred mountain of Para. And this is kind of a view of kind of southwest from where I am. And I have conceived of, of this in an eagle feather, which is my way of honoring her. I consider Pyramid Lake something like saying my alma mater uh, because she has uh, taught me so, so much. So that's the way that I'm beginning with this. So now, what is this, how this is connected to my subject of this poetry festival? It is because um, this is a flyer. Back in March, this painting was being exhibited in the Depot Gallery in Sparks, Nevada. And uh, the theme was Tamo, Tahoe a Pyramid Exhibition. So this fit within the theme for that gallery. Here in San Diego, a friend of Claudia's saw this here, this one-of-a-kind picture like that. And she has you know, one of my paintings that she lives with, and she saw this one, and she liked it very much. And so she would like to have it in her house. So the connection is that Vivian brought this painting down to Lee Viney. And from there, we transported it, drove it down here to San Diego, where soon uh, Catherine will, will have it in her house. So that's how all of that has been connected. <clears throat> So at the same time, I want to have a way of honoring um, Yosemite. Here, as I have these two feather wands, these are I actually from there. From there was a um, a shop, a shop there in the Vining that features pretty much uh, Native American arts and crafts, and so I've gotten things from there, and these two feather wands, I've arranged them so that I'm honoring my painting here. <clears throat> and also over here, this is a basket from there. Um, when Yosemite, however, was made or turned into a national park, the indigenous people who had been living in that park had to move out. Um, and as far as I can say that I think of them being represented by the Mono Paiute. And Lucy Parker made this basket and she lives there in Lee Vining uh, as a representative, I'm saying, of the Mono Lake Paiute people. Her mother, Julia Parker, is featured in the Yosemite Center there. She makes baskets. Our late friend, uh, Gina Dickinson, uh, had made friends with her there in Yosemite and had inherited several of Julia's baskets. Julia has also been featured in various videos, uh, so she's very much a representative even though no longer are any natives living in Yosemite Park. So I have this one actually uh, from Lucy personally, so that's why I want to show that here. <laughs> Below that here this is a, what we just call a tule duck. This is made by Mike Williams, a Paiute man. I think he maybe he lives in Chers. Um, these um, are, are a, frame, a framework you know, for a decoy. In other words, the skin or scalp of a duck is stretched over one of these. And of course, they're put out as duck decoys. <coughs> and they're very old, hundreds maybe, even thousands of years old. 
uh, that have been found in the dry caves in Nevada because they're dry. <coughs> Everything, including uh, human interments, have <coughs> survived, you know, in these caves. <coughs> and so I have that here as a representative again of Native American and, in this case, Paiute. Um, I should go back here to the lake. Uh, Pyramid Lake is what the name has become. The people who have been living there and still live there, Paiute is, is pretty much the, the common name, but that's an American name. Uh, their own name, original name, is the Numa. The, the Numa. And that uh, there is a hatchery there, located there, where uh, it's called the Numana Hatchery, where these people manage and care for the ancient prehistoric fish that lives here that they call the Kuiwi. And that seems to be more the focus or, or interest of the indigenous people there concerning this lake, the ancient, ancient fish there. <clears throat> So speaking of fish, then I have this fish here. Now, <clears throat> this month, the month of August, is the month of called the Sturgeon Moon. And uh, I have been celebrating that for the past uh, weeks of August. And there, this time, there in Lee Vining at that uh, shop that I just mentioned, I found this artifact. Um, the provenance of it, I don't know. The vendor says she didn't know. Somebody brought it in on consignment. It looks quite archaic. It's made of slate. I have no idea how somebody could make it. Uh, it does look archaic. And so I think that it kind of goes with this is a sturgeon. <clears throat> and the uh, illustration itself is been made to show the sturgeon clan's mother sitting here with the sturgeon fish. So there is a resemblance of this to that. Coincidentally, that is, at the same time, one of our five-fold coyote poet group, <laughs> I can't even call it like that, is uh, Deanna Beachley from Las Vegas. <clears throat> So it was her birthday. We're celebrating her birthday at the same time. So she's the birthday of the Sturgeon Moon. So I can come down here, and this is a piece uh, of hers. She is a medicine woman. She is an artist. She is a poet. She is a college professor. And she is a woman of love. <clears throat> and this piece here, and relevant to my subject, she's titled that. Tuolumne goddess. Now, she finds little stones. She finds little stones and with pencil and prismacolor she f fascinatingly um, draws them. So that's why I have to put it. That's what, what this is. And she's done many, many. She's, I would say, has created a nation of these exotic individual pebbles a Pebble Nation, a Pebble Nation by Deanna Beachley. <clears throat> and that was uh, a gift to me from our previous uh, time at Tuolumne Meadows. Yosemite is uh, certainly uh, symbolizes itself by mountains, mountain peaks and rocks and forests. So that's why I have this this here to you know, that to symbolize that. The other thing that it's known for is bears. So over here I have a bear or two, you know, holding a tree. And that here, uh, this is from Sun Bear's uh, astrology calendar, Earth calendar, you know, for the bear. September, according to this astrology, is also the time of the brown bear. So we will be approaching the astrology of the brown bear of, of that time. So that's good when we have that here. And the other thing that I wanted to remember, if you can look at that here, 
is that this month has two full moons. And the saying, once in a full blue moon, once in a blue moon. So that's how I've illustrated that here. Uh, Claudia tells me Thursday is going to be the blue moon. So that, that's very auspicious that we have had two uh, moons in this month. And that, well, it celebrates um, Diana's uh, birthday in this moon, in this moon time. Here's one of the pieces in the poetry workshop. The poet, the featured poet, you know, uh, gives us a lot, a lot of good material and how we are going to uh, work this out with poetry. Uh, and one of these prompts is to go outside the cabin. The cabin, I should say, is a very spacious one room cabin called Parsons Lodge and it was designed by Maybeck and Wright, uh, very famous, you know, in the San Francisco Bay Area. And even when I was a youngster living with my grandmother there in Berkeley, you know, uh, she was a Christian Science and we would attend the Christian Science Church that was designed by Maybeck, you know, right behind the Vedanta Temple there in Berkeley. So anyway, just saying how it all goes together because here I'm in this lodge uh, with his, their design, let's kind of put it that way. <clears throat> I don't know One old. How, how old it is, 108 years old, it's like that. And very interesting, Margaret, who I think arranges these poetry things, she's a ranger there, and when she was a youngster, she lived there with her family. There's a, a couple other little uh, kind of log buildings there. And I wanted to read this one. Uh, that this was in the workshop by uh, Forrest Gander. Uh, again, to go outside and find something and write about it. Uh, in this one, he wanted it to be a 14-line sonnet. I got the 14 lines, that's what I can say for it. <laughs> and he wanted to uh, have a title for it, so I, I called it Desert Cherokee. The earth-embedded rock gives itself an arrowhead shape to be the head of a straggled patch of hair-like grass, rooting out of clumps of bloody dark moss, pushed up by a serious curve of a stubby wood club, like the duck-headed tule whose feathered scalp decoyed an ancient lake memory found in Nevada caves bedding human bodies with fine red hair amid basket offerings. So after we came back and that uh, we, you know, read these, I did, did a reading of this, then he said, Forrest said, now go back to that site and focus on it particularly. And so you can see in what I've, I just read, uh, it's something that, that actually is there in the ground and this is what I have made of what I saw there. So now I'm going back there and I'm saying this in particular of that. This earth ground scalp of soft dark moss fringing itself with tangles of grass mines of an est moss nid in Arabic to denote an altar, a raised place to extol a natural encounter. So I delivered that out loud and to that uh, Forrest Gander said that is uh, a lexicon, that single word. <laughs> so he definitely likened uh, my piece to poetry. Well I should say the first part of that uh, he had introduced to us also a form of poetry 2,000 years old from southern India, you know, called Sangam, like that, where the poet is relating the landscape, the natural 
landscape emotionally, humanly, like that. So that's how he referred to my piece, that uh, it was, you know, relating to the landscape in, the, in that way. <clears throat> Uh, and this one, uh, the first workshop we had was Rosemary Tromer, like that, a wonderful dynamic woman. A uh, couple, couple of, of her books. You know, I have, have this one here, Hush. And the other one she had was Naked for Tea. Some people don't know of that. <clears throat> so. We had the same uh, prompt, and this was the first workshop to go outside you know, and find something to write about. <clears throat> and so that's what happened here. Who was the first person to think of transforming one's successive footsteps onto a parallel two by two, making an upright ladder against that old log wall so as to say, to the little old lizard. See, I can climb too. Yeah, sure, but I bet you'll never be able to drop your tail when you need to get away, Coyote says. Everyone liked that one. So with that, I think I have uh, celebrated our festival here for everybody who is watching and some of our members will also be viewing this. So I'm sure that I have said everything. <laughs> okay. Applause. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you.